Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out this bonus material. Again, you're only receiving this either because a friend really, really likes you uh, and they shared it with you or because you're an exclusive member of the Panvisio email list. I have a che cheesy um, nickname for the email list, the Pan Visionaries email list, um, because we really want to expand your vision and give you alternative perspectives on social change issues. And also we want to expand our vision of what it means to have solutions for social change, as hence Pan Visio, the name of the organization. Um, so this was a bonus material from an episode with Marita Richardson, where we, on the tail end of the episode, we were talking about racism and how to talk to people about it. How do you talk to white people about racism? And is it even worth it? Is it so sensitive that you just shouldn't do it because it just doesn't go anywhere and you're more um, productive in, in enlightening your own people of color, you know, the brown people or black people? And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we kind of go back and forth on. And I myself am a little conflicted about this because on one hand... Um, you know, those in power are more often than not white people. And if you're listening to this and you're talking about, but the president is black, um, I don't have time for that kind of, uh, that kind of like, a superficial response. That one person who, by the way, has been president for the last eight years has been stonewalled in almost everything he tried to do. Um, anyways, uh, how do you go about this conversation um, when a lot of people are in power who have the power to change, make significant changes politically are white, are white. And again, I'm speaking generalities and uh, I hope I don't, you know, get people upset when they try to point out the one exception to the rule. You got a Latino this or you have a black person who's charge of that and, you know, everything's fine because we have some cases of people of color who are exceptional and who have, you know, quote unquote, made it and so can everybody else. Um, so that, which goes, makes my point even further, you know, that talking about this with white people sometimes doesn't get anywhere. You're more often better off trying to empower your own community and like educate your own, educate your, those who come from similar backgrounds and places where you grow up. So with that being said, um, I decided to do an ex experiment and say, Hey, what if I get someone who's white on the show? And they're anonymous, but they're still on the show. And try to take a stab at it as an experimental piece and um, talk through some issues about race, identity, and social political conditions of black and brown people. And I gotta say, part of me feels I was a little too soft. I was trying to be too nice. Um, and I, it's, I'm, I kind of feel a little vulnerable sharing this episode because. In some levels, I feel like I let people down because I, w I could have done better. But at the same time, I am giving myself some grace in this whole thing because it's an experimental episode. I may do this again. And, you know, who who always hits it out the park the first time they do it? Especially when you, when you know it's being recorded, right? You get camera shy, except you're in audio shy because it's audio recording. Um, what else can I say about this episode? Um, my conclusion on my first episode, I can't really say whether I'm going to spend as much time on trying to talk to white people and, and, and you know, really uh, get them to understand this. Um, and, but I'm not sure I'm going to give up either, you know. I might have, I might again, I might try this again with other people in different capacities. But either way, um, please check, uh, please give me your feedback on this and let me know what you think. And also, I want to give you some context on why this, uh, the, the post that we're referencing. Um, so, it was directly after the Alton Sterling shoot, uh, murder, um, and someone made a post on her timeline, not on her timeline, but she saw someone on, on a social media outlet. Uh, I'm sorry, the name of the person, but you don't turn on the TV and see your people being killed, exploited, slandered, etc. You have no idea what it is to be oppressed, yet you sit here and comment as if you are a minority yourself. You want my honest opinion? I can't wait till Bloods, Crips, Latin Kings, etc. start aiming their guns at cops instead of at each other. And then someone writes, that's going too far, and then someone else says something else, you know, <clears throat> they reply. And so this set her off, the person I'm going to be speaking with, it set her off. 
on this post, which kind of had a lot of comments. And this is her post. Um, I've tried to shut my, I've tried to keep my mouth shut, but I really can't do it anymore. It's if I see one more status saying you people don't understand us and what we and what we're going through, I'm going to flip out. You people? Question mark. Let's take a step back for a second before anyone dares uh, to point fingers at, and saying you don't know what we feel. Let's look at the look at the statistics of being a woman. Women have a 25% of getting raped in their lifetime. One in four women will get raped. Why aren't people protesting that? Side note, they are. They do. Um, As women, we are constantly told to watch out and be safe because of the dangers we face. We live every day in fear of catcalling, domestic abuse, abuse and rape. So before anyone wants to sit there and tell me, I don't know how it feels to be scared for your life, look at the facts and shut your mouth. Thanks. So I personally know uh, this individual which is why I reached out to have this conversation first offline. Um, and then I asked her to say, can we have this conversation again on, on for the show? And the reason why um, I wanted to do that was because I care for this person. I know this person. I saw them grow. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter how I know this person. Um, you know, I have a great deal of care. A great deal of care for their, their potential in life. And they overcame some stuff and, and, you know, they graduated and, you know, working and, you know, doing their thing. And I saw this post normally, if I saw it from anyone else, I probably would have been like, you know, block, delete, or, you know, just ignored it. But because I care about this person, I really care about their understanding. So just so you guys know, this isn't some um, random white person that I just, you know, don't know and I just wanted to hit up and say hey you want to talk about these things no um yeah I have I'm very selective when when I kind of want to have these conversations within anyone and um this is what we came up with and I hope you enjoy and I hope it's a learning experience and I hope um you know it sheds light on different avenues of how to approach um creating awareness white allyship if that's still going to be a thing And just kind of give you a behind-the-curtain view of how a white person is thinking when it comes to um, these issues. Oh, one quick thing before I let you go. If you want the post that she references to, the actual post, and also her response, um, you can, I'm going to provide a link to that, along with the comments to her response or her post, which I thought thought was uh, very interesting. Check it out. Enjoy. Was I like I said I had you know, like you said too there was a ton of posts all over social media uh, a particular post that I saw that really set me off um, a person I had went to high school with an African American um, posted his opinions which I mean everyone's entitled to their own opinion um, but there was a comment where he had wrote that he hoped that all the gang members. Um, get together and start to shoot the police and he can't wait for it. And I mean, that just really triggered. Um, and my, my post was more about, um, like he wrote a lot in his post, you people don't understand. And I, I kept seeing a lot of people, black and white, uh, you people will never understand what African Americans go through. And my post was saying, you know, um, I, that may not be so, but I'm a white female in, you know, America. And, I do understand discrimination to an extent. I mean, I've been in situations where I've been looked at as not adequate enough for a job because I'm a woman. I've had people shake my hand and say, oh, hello, sweetie, and not be treated the same. And, you know, I've been, um, we had discussed that I went, I've been out to a bar or a club with people and, you know, my friends have been sexually harassed when we're out. And it's like, you know, okay, I don't understand to the full extent, I guess, but I do understand how it feels to be harassed and discriminated constantly as a woman. And then, um, what was the response on social media when you posted that? Because I, I actually uh, didn't, I don't really call and um, wanted to know what was the, in your immediate circles, what was that like? 
Um, I did have two people, uh, two girls that I had went to college with, uh, comment on it. And um, the, the one, you know, she was like, well, I, I think it's a different case here. Um, it, it's it's very different being African American. I mean, both girls that I had that had made the comments were uh, white. Um, and they're like, yeah, it's different. And, you know, we, we talked about it, but the one girl that I had interacted with, um, she was very negative and, and saying that I, that I didn't understand at all and it was not the same at all and, you know, how dare I compare the two and um, to not put on a show for social media. I, I, I messaged her separately to speak with her and um, she told me she has a boyfriend now that's African American and her ex-boyfriend as well was African American and she told me, you know, you don't understand. She said when we were together, you know, we were at the movies and, you know, he just came out of the bathroom and police were asking him for his ID and uh, when we left, I got pulled over. They tried to charge me and he got arrested because he was mad and like hit my car and I mean, that, that was why she was so out like mad at what I had wrote, but we, we settled and we, we both agreed, you know, I wasn't saying, well, you know, African American people don't feel discrimination or anything, but I, I was just, some of those people that had written, well, you people, you people, I think that had really irked me and, and just pushed me to write that post. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think that's a great way to term it. Like to push you to write, to push you to write it. Um, in hindsight, would you have written that post that way, or how would you do anything differently about that post? Uh, I, I think. I mean, I would have. I think I would have kept it the same. I mean, I still feel the same way. I, and and I, I want to make sure you know to to clarify. I don't. I'm not saying that as a woman that what I go through is any more or less than what African-American people are going through. And I think that's how my, my message got misinterpreted. I was just saying to the people, and I, and I did specify my message for the people saying, you people, because I, I mean, like I said, I don't understand. I've never been African-American. I will never be African-American. So I don't understand the discrimination, but I do to an extent know how it feels to be discriminated against. So I think I would have kept it the same. I mean, maybe I would have clarified a little bit better um, to yeah. whom I was speaking. But I, I think I would have still posted the same. Uh, yeah, because I think that's the big thing about having these conversations or even communicating that. It's almost like you got to put um, three or four huge disclaimers because um, it's a funny thing. Um, people insert um, – would insert – the code almost, you know, coded language, language. And that's, that's a big, that's a big thing in terms, especially when it comes to news coverage from the right, you know, conservative media, they're, they're, um, uh, they're prone to use code messages to kind of, you know, explain away certain things. Um, cause they can't go outright, say certain things, um, for fear of being called racist or whatever, or bigoted or whatever. And so people speak in code. And so, uh, it's almost like, um, you're walking in a field of landmines where it's like, if you say something, it's almost like you have to be, you have to go to like the 10th degree to be explicit and qualify everything that's said. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and that's a, that's a, that's a big thing. Um, you know, I, I liken it to this. I mean, there's, there's levels of, there's, a levels of suffering, right? Uh, levels of discrimination and oppression and whatever. And females in general definitely have, uh, seen their fair share of that. Um, when you, when some, when people say you don't understand, you mentioned the word push to write that. Um, it doesn't seem like this was the first time you've heard that phrase, like you don't understand. Yeah. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I was in, I mean, you're aware, I went to um, a school and I was in a, a program, um, a summer program that I had been the only um, Caucasian person and out of, I believe we were 31 and it was um, black and Hispanic and I was the only Caucasian person and um, when I had first started the first week, um, it was very difficult for me, um, not dealing with people of different ethnicities, but just everyone had their, you know, the Spanish people were together and the African-American people were together, and I was just, okay, you know. <laughs> um, 
And when I when I eventually became friends, and I mean some of them still are my closest friends, um, they said, oh, well, you know, you white people, I thought you were one of those white people, you know, and, and I was classified as you white people. And that's when I first realized, um, I mean, you know, I was, I was a kid, I was 18, I realized how bad of a, a race divide that we do have. Um, but yeah, that, that was when I had first heard that, that whole, you white people, you white people. And at first, I, I did take offense to it, but eventually, like I said, I became very, very close with everyone in my group. Um, so it, it didn't bother me as much. Um, but yeah, I think that's when I first had started. And then, you know, later on, I mean, I had, I had told you, uh, I had spoken to a girl when I was in college. Um, and the first time I met her, she was just very, very nasty. And, you know, people are, are just like that. But she said... I don't know how it even came across, but I said, uh, do, is there a problem? I've never met you before. And she said, yeah, I don't like you because you're white. And I, I, was, I was a little taken back by it. And I said, excuse me? And she's like, I just don't like white people. And I was like, all right. Yeah, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion of, of who they like and don't like. But I said, you know, you don't know me. And she was like, you, all, you white people are all the same. And I think that was definitely very huge for me because I was I was very taken back by that because how dare you classify everyone as you white people the same as how dare I or not myself but in as an example that's like me saying oh all you black people are the same all you Hispanic or all you oriental you know it's just to class to classify someone I'm sorry classify someone based on their skin color I just felt was very judgmental and I think that was definitely the biggest, that was the first time I really, it outraged me. Yeah. Um, so, so was there an element um, to that, that kind of, you say, pushed you to the edge to kind of rate that, was there any back, would you say like that background experiences, um, subtleties kind of like pushed, helped inform that post to say, Hey, I'm tired of this, you know, and, and you, and you wrote that post or I'm just kind of judge it. Was it the moment thing or was it just a series of subtle experiences with those conversations and that, that, that kind of, um, you know, yeah, experiences. I think it was a little bit of both. I think, um, I mean, those two experiences that I told you about, I mean, but I just, you know, just let them go. And, um, I think when everything happened, um, with Alton Sterling, you know, I, I, one of my close friends from high school, I called her, uh, the morning after it happened and we discussed it and I said, that's terrible. You know, uh, that's, I can't believe that happened. And, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. And I, you know, and then we went on, on social media and saw that a classmate of ours, um, was like, oh, you white people. And it was like, you know, I just felt very offended by that because, like I said, I am not classified. I should not be classified by the color of my skin, nor should anyone. So I think it was just in the moment of speaking to my friend about that and all my experiences and then just seeing his post. Um, and, and there had even been a comment, um, another boy that we had went to school with um, who was white had commented on the status on uh, the social media. And was making, you know, valid points. They both had valid points, but um, eventually it, it just got very nasty. And, and, I, and I thought to myself, you know, this isn't how things are going to change. This is, right now we need to unite. And, and people just going at it like this, it's not going to help. And you people and you people and everyone pointing and, and you know, fighting with each other is not going to help. So, I mean, I think everything just came together and just made me, just pushed me to, to post that. Yeah. Um and, and I think the the for for people who are listening who don't have access to that post, I mean, it's not so much about the, what the post that matters. I think it's what um, what we can learn from the experience and 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 what surrounds these kind of conversations. Because um, you know, there here's here's the thing. It's like it's about understanding first and foremost. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the conversation we had uh, after soon after that was, you know, almost like. When when something when a tragedy st strikes, and even if it doesn't happen to you, it's a collective 
is a, there's a collective experience, so to speak. Um, it can speak to it can. What's, we know how when you hear about a story and then you think about that story and how it, you were in a similar situation. Sometimes it conjures up those same emotions, right? Have you ever had that happen to you before? Yeah, definitely. I understand. Yeah, yeah. And so, so um, my thing was. You know, when people have that experience and, and, and there's a collective experience and there's a history behind that, people would definitely go um, say things that are def, uh, you, 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 whether you term them inappropriate or not acceptable or just wrong or just even harsh. It could be justified, but harsh. It's it's almost like I'm going to, especially in the social media context, I'm not going to take it. As, as stupid as some comments can be on both sides, I'm not going to take it as personally because it's like when people say you people on either side, I'm not going to take it as personal because I'm just I, I'm pretty sure that um, most of the time the person who's saying those reckless things um, are not either educated on the topic, um, have read up on the topic or know about the details of the case or the situation um, regarding the incident that triggered those emotions and triggered the uh, the, 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 the the comments, um, so that's that's the first thing. Uh, I think it's it's really hard to do. Easier said than done is to when I when I see those kind of comments, I'm like, I kind of do like kind of like a sigh, almost like I feel sorry for people when they kind of go overboard with these things because again, it's so personal, so they're so close to it, and it kind of brings me to this point. You know, if someone's at a funeral mourning, right? And and they're saying, you know, that you don't you can never understand. But if you go to them and say, well, I I understand because I went through X, Y and Z. Um, can you see how that takes away from that person's experience of like, you know, uh, what they're currently going through? Do you see a point behind that at all? No, I, I yes, I, I definitely do. Um, I mean, like you said before, when when things happen like this, it triggers. So I, and I understand I think it was just, um, like, yeah, how you said, like, when you go to a funeral and you tell someone, well, this, this, and this happened. I just, for me, I, uh, reading all of his, the, um, the posts that the person I went to high school with, it, it just, you know, I had seen other posts the whole week, and, and I didn't post anything, but just seeing stuff like that, I just, I couldn't. I, I just couldn't bear to not post something because it was just like how you said, you know, everyone you know, if you're at a funeral and someone loses someone. And I can see everyone's outrage, and it must be terrible, especially, like, for the black community especially, you know, to lose two people that were, and as I'm sure you've seen the videos, doesn't look like they were, you know, doing anything for, for what they got. But um, I definitely understand it. Just it, just seeing his post just really set me off. So I think that's why I just was like, you know, like you said, when you're at a funeral, well, this, this, and this. And that's how I, I kind of clarified in my post because before you say, I don't understand, I do understand to an extent, you know, and that's, that's definitely why I posted what I said. Yeah, I think that's the thing is like to an extent, you know, um, and, it's, and it's hard. It's like, it's almost like theoretically on paper, like, and the, I, I do this too when I'm talking to my wife about these topics and, and she's a really good um, person to kind of, uh, sharpen me when I'm having these conversations is like, yes, Joed, like it's, it's logical. Yes. It's yeah. You could say all these things and theoretically and possibly in the realm of possibilities and probabilities, and you can qualify these things like in my experience and that, but we're dealing with human beings and even uttering those things or saying those things um, and making it about you can be, in itself inappropriate even if you say you know like okay hands up like let me let me just tell you how i feel or what i've been through and all those things like it, she kind of kind of checks me on that um you know and i and i get it like the trigger from that post really um kind of put you over to, to to say those things um do, do you i mean i think those kind of experiences triggered that person too I mean, do you feel like it's 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 that's the that's the at that point in time it's to say, um, especially when someone's like in, like a day or two after the fact. Do you think it's appropriate to kind of like make that point, like, hey, I know to an extent, like at least this much, um, 
even then? Is it worth it for you to to do that, to make that point um, against someone who's kind of like, you know, venting how they feel? I mean, if, you know, I, I have him on multiple social medias. And, I mean, like I said, it's his social media. He can post what he wants. But it's he posts things like that all the time, kind of, I don't want to say bashing white people, but mm-hmm. a lot of times it's, it's, it's things like that. And, you know, I, I just... I don't pay much mind to them. I read what he writes, but, you know, I don't say anything. Um, but, you know, I think... But it did get you that one time, though. It, it did. I needed to post something because, I mean, I, like you said, it, it may have been inappropriate, you know, in a time of grief to, to do something like that, but it was it was just too much to, to read and just, you know, I, I understand, this is my take on it, I understand that the African-American community is hurting right now. And I understand when there's tragedy in any community that people are hurting. But I don't think that whether you're hurting or not, that you have the ability to say whatever you want with no no one to say anything back to you, you know. I mean, he posted that on social media to get a response, you know. And, and people did. People, tons, there was over 55 responses, you know. Everyone saying this, this, and that, you know. So, I mean, my post may have been inappropriate for that aspect but like I said I don't think because anyone is grieving that it gives them the right to get away with you know everything and there's like I said to an extent you know but it's it's a constant not hey let's unite and fix the world it's hey I hate white people and hey white people are the reason this and hey I hope all cops get shot and obviously not all cops are white but it's just it's a constant just dig at people instead of saying let's fix this it's saying who to hurt to fix it and and i i just i couldn't i couldn't bear to read that anymore without saying something back yeah so this goes back to this whole thing about social media 